Hi everybody. In this video we're going to talk about how to simplify radical expressions. Radical expressions are roots. You're probably familiar with square rooting, but you need to know that there's also higher roots too. There's third rooting or cube rooting, taking the fourth root, fifth root, and so on. So we're going to take our discussion of roots, which you've probably only done square roots up until now, and extend it well beyond square roots to higher roots. Let's talk about what you've probably already learned with square roots in geometry or algebra 2. Let's take a look at a number like, oh, let's say the square root, eh, let me go back to black here. Let's say I have the square root of um, 72. Okay? You may have learned at one time that one way to solve this problem is to find the largest perfect square in that number. And the perfect squares, 1, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, you know these, 9 squared, 10 squared, and so on, right? So, if you look for the largest square root in 72, you'll discover that it's 36. Okay? And you may have been shown that you can take 36 times 2, and then it turns out you can separate out radicals as long as they're multiplied, like that. And then we know the square root of 36 is 6. So that's how you simplify a square root using that method. Well, it turns out that that's a, it's a really great method. There's nothing wrong with it. But it's not going to help you very much when you start talking about cube roots and fourth roots and fifth roots and so on, unless you can keep in your head all the perfect cubes and all the perfect fourths and all the perfect fifths, which are really not easy to remember. So there's another way to do this. And let's take a look at it. I'm going to start really simply and say, what is the square root of 9? Well, we know that 9 is 3 times 3. And what does the square root mean? The square root means what number times itself gives you that number under the radical. What number times itself? Well, clearly 3 times itself gives you that answer, doesn't it? Gives you 9. So the answer to this problem is 3. Your answer is 3. Look what I did. I took that pair of 3's, that pair of 3's, and I eliminated them and put the answer outside. Does that make sense? Okay. So take a look. Let's look at a cube root now. Let's say the cube root of 8. Well, the cube root of 8, 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. The cube root means, this number right here, it's called the index, means what times itself 3 times gives me that number under the radical sign. Well, clearly, if we factor it, we see that the three twos, two times two times two, gives me eight, which means if I pull a two outside, the answer to the problem is two, because two times itself, three times, gives me eight. I hope you noticed that this index here, three, matched the number of um, items we need in order to take one out. Now you might ask, well, what about the square root? Well, if you remember about square roots, there is an understood 2 here that we don't write. Okay? So that's perfectly okay. All right? So how do we use this technique then to simplify that kind of a problem? Okay? So we're going to write the prime factors of 72. Now, as far as finding the prime factors, you probably learned at one point or another to do a factor tree. And that's what I would suggest you do. 72 is 2 times 36. 36 is 2 times 18. 18 is 2 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. Or you could have started with 9 and 8. Um, and 8 comes down to 3 2's and 9 comes down to 2 3's. But regardless of how you do the factor tree, you get... 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And let's talk about what we just did upstairs here in our earlier problem. What we did was we looked for, if it's a square root, we looked for pairs of items underneath the radical. We eliminated that pair and put one of them outside. So let's go ahead and do that with 72. I'm going to give, me, give myself a little bit of room here. I didn't leave myself any room. 
All right, put the equal sign way over there. So what have we got? We've got a pair of twos. All right. I can take one of those out and put it out here, just like we did earlier. And now I have a pair of threes here as well. I can pull the three out and pull it out here. Okay? And then all we really need to do is just multiply what's outside and multiply what's inside, what's left over. Two times three is six. Radical, what's left over on the inside? Two. So I hope you can see we got the exact same answer here. Same answer. Okay? All right, let's do another one. Let's do a higher root this time. Let's say, what is the fourth root of, oh, I don't know. <laughs> let's say 96. How's that? The fourth root of 96. So let's go ahead and factor 96. 96, 2 times 48, 2 times 24, 2 times 12, 2 times 6, 2 times 3. Here we go. Okay. So I've got the fourth root of, what have I got here? I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 twos, and a 3. Okay. Now what does my index tell me? What does my root tell me? My root tells me I'm going to look for groups of 4 this time. So what have I got? I've got a group of 4 twos here, don't I? So let's pull one of those twos out here. Are there any more groups of four? Sure aren't. So we're done here, aren't we? So that's two times radical six, right? Nope, you better be saying, no, no, you forgot something because that's a mistake that all of you are going to make at some point. Please don't make this mistake. By the way, the six came from two times three. The mistake that we made there was we forgot to write the index back in. Don't forget to do that. It's a very common mistake, and I don't want you to make that mistake. Okay? We can also do the same thing even if there are variables inside the radical. Okay? So let's take a look at, oh, let's see. How about we do, let's do a fourth root again the fourth root of 243 a to the eighth c to the fifth. That's an eight. Let me clear that up. Okay. Let's go ahead and do some factoring on the inside. So I've got the fourth root of 243. I'll leave it to you to do it, but it's five threes. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's 9 times 9 is 81 times 3 is 243. Now we could write out all 8 A's. Let's do it. You don't actually have to do this once you get used to it. But for this first problem here with variables, we'll write them out. And 5 C's. Okay? And we're looking for groups of 4, aren't we? Okay? So here we go. 4 threes. Pull that three out. All right, I'll use a different color. What have I got? I've got four A's. Let's pull out an A. Another four A's. We can pull out another A. And then don't we also have a group of four C's? Sure do. Multiply together what we have outside. We have three a squared C. 3 A times A is A squared C times the, don't forget the four, fourth root of 3 C. That's what's left on the inside. That's our answer. Okay? Let's do another one. Oh, before we go on, you probably don't need to write out all these A's and C's if you're thinking about it. Okay? Let's think about it for a second. Um, it's kind of, it, these numbers can be big. I mean, what if I had said A to the 40th and C to the 63rd? You're not going to write out 40 A's and 63 C's. So you just have to think about it. If I have 8 A's and I'm looking for groups of 4, how many groups of 4 are there in 8? And the answer is 2. 
So I would pull out Na squared, right? Okay, and then C to the fifth, how many groups of four are there in five C's? Well, there's one group of four, C to the first, right? C to the first, but there'll be one C left over after we pull out that group of four. So that's the C that's left on the inside. So again, you don't have to write out all the variables, um, but if you want to, you can. Okay, how about this one? four times the third root of 64 m to the third n to the sixth. Okay? So we got a four on the outside already. We haven't done one like this yet, but there's already a four on the outside. No big deal. It just means that whatever we pull out from inside the radical, we're just going to multiply by four because there's already a four in the front. Okay? 64. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And I'm going to just leave this m to the third and to the sixth because I think we can figure that out. Okay? I hope you can see right away that I have three twos and another three twos. And I hope you remember why we're looking for groups of three. Right there. That's why we're looking for groups of three. Okay? So let's say we didn't write out all of the uh, all of the m's and the n's. Okay, and we just looked at groups of three. So first of all, what have I got outside? I've got two times two times four is sixteen. Now let's take a look inside. I've got m to the three. That means I've got three m's, but I'm looking for groups of three. So that means all three of those m's will disappear, and I'll pull one outside. Okay, and n to the sixth. There are two groups of three in there, aren't there? 3 plus 3 is 6, 2 groups of 3, so I'm going to be pulling out 2 n's or n squared. But what happened? We've gotten rid of everything on the inside. So that means there's no radical left, and that's my answer. Okay, I hope that's all been clear to you. And now we'll be moving on to some operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Thanks.